Welcome to the Thrill of Driving podcast and this week we are talking about the 15th CM Auto Expo which is going on as we speak. I have with me Adil Jal Darukhanawala that's at Adil Jal. Adil thank you for being back and Adil. I'm now also on Insta okay. <laughs> at Adil Jal on Instagram. Yeah I've been seeing the stuff yeah. that you've been putting up. Yeah. So Adil and myself we just, just got back from Delhi from the Auto Expo straight into the office straight into the podcast to talk about the stuff that you should be looking at if you want to go to the Auto Expo. And the first question should people go to the Auto Expo? Of course yes. If ever you want to see Indian industry make a terrific impact this is the year you got to go and see that so i heard a lot of people saying that no not worth coming to the auto expo it's become smaller but i think they are maybe industry stalwarts or they're jaded or whatever but for me as an enthusiast it was still great fun to go and look of at course, new cars of course the new metal ready to launch it's interesting to see the direction where manufacturers are going design direction technology direction not just that it's a paradigm shift in the making we are looking at a shift happening it will not happen overnight but these are the first shoots which you'll see gather real more traction and i think another 5 6 years who knows the entire automotive world in india would be turned upside down so i'm not going to ask you if you're going to be driving electric cars after 5 years no i'll still keep uh, petrol and diesel with me i'll save a nice evo for driving in the a lot of cars days, and bikes i'll keep so <laughs> but the thing is we should come straight to the stuff that we really liked and the show stopper for you other no first and foremost i'll look at it in a different way the first show stopper my show stopper is completely different from very many people the most significant vehicle of the show if i have to say something i loved everything the best concepts the best uh, production cars came from tata motors but the sig- most significant car of the show came from mahindra the mahindra atom if you have to look at that mm, it will yeah. completely revolutionize last mile connectivity in this country it's fabulous i had a drive in it from the hall to the gate and back two three times and i came to pick up a friend of mine from the gate and the first thing he told me after that short drive says i want to buy this car yeah so that's the thing they had a lot of these atoms running around i almost yes. got run over by one because it is silent which is a good thing because yeah. not only uh, pollution of the air but no pollution of sound also uh, it is going to revolutionize last mile connectivity and by that i mean that this is going to be the used rickshaws, for say, the rickshaws from, from the metro the... station to maybe the parking garage no, of your house from my house yeah. from a house to say the vegetable vendor vegetable for vendor for instance or to the theater it, it's it's superb it's really most significant vehicle which was there at the show was that so it's a and three seater it could yeah and it could also come in very very cost competitive yeah no one yeah. thinks about that so as a package what the nano first espoused unfortunately it got carried away and they took it away this i think they have looked at it and if you see the configuration if you've seen anyone has seen a london taxi yes there yeah. is space near the driver for the luggage yeah. and they've got ample leg room for the passengers behind yeah I it's think, like business class passenger yes, space eh? true <laughs> and it is it is brilliant yeah so it's electric it is small it looks cute it looks happy and yes, cheerful yes. Uh, it will have a range of i think 80 kilometers they're it, talking about perfect for which is great for yeah, running correct, around within correct, the city correct. they are going to bring it to market this year that it, is the it, important it, thing it's it not happen a, yeah, it's not a pie in the sky concept no 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 the fact that they had about 10 15 of those running around yes you don't make 10 15 prototypes that way and they were all production ready cars they had been run in well etc i think for me the most significant vehicle of the show was that So rickshaws today are priced at around 1.75 lakh rupees going no they now go a little higher as well so but this it, will be twice the price of a rickshaw it, because it, it's it, electric right yeah it no it could be they could what you call look at it with the fame scheme and all that what they have got even if it comes across at say about 2 and a half to you know, between 2 and a half to 3 lakhs i think it will be worth it so sticking with mahindra hmm. mahindra made a big play about electrics they had the atom they also had the e kuv 100 which they are going to launch it's going to come to the market Correct. in april may they have announced prices 8.25 yeah. 8.5 lakh rupees yeah but i'll tell you showroom. yeah i'll tell you one thing there's a there's a very again is a very smart move it's not to undercut the nexon ev mm-hmm. you have to understand one thing the nexon ev comes across with a range of about 300 plus kilometers this comes with a range of 150 kilometers yes half the price of the car is a battery so you do the match and then you see this is half and half so in that sort of sense what mahindra is trying to do 
great city car is their ambition with this car used in the cities for the families and i think they have really reworked the dynamics of that game and they've priced it accordingly if they had got a car to do uh, 300 kilometers plus same way the pricing would have come also so, close to the next what time. ashish malik who is the head of mahindra's yeah. uh, mobility e mobility division he told me was that you talking about the 8.5 lakh price but what's significant to note is that this is 19% more than the ic engine kuv 100 which is that, significant just that, 19% that, more but that that's so, precisely what yeah. the nexor is also yeah so got, it's not like now. priced exorbitantly true, 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 it'll true. be good for city commuting so it is intercity not intercity because Correct. 150 kilometers claimed range means you'll probably do 100 kilometers 100 on a charge kilometers. with yeah, a normal yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, driving but practical sensible and dr goenka he okay. said that now there's no excuse not to buy an electric car yeah i know the play which mahindra is making on electrics is massive because they have been the pioneers of yeah. uh, electro mobility in the country so and i can understand exactly where and why they are doing all this i can understand what all thought processes have gone in mahesh babu who's head of mahindra electric who spearheads that they have got lots many more ideas mm-hmm. but they wanted to what you call do it where easy and quick acceptability from indian society should happen yeah so, and so this is one of the ways to do it you know they are also looking at a rival for the next on eb so they showed the e xuv 300 yeah. uh, so that is coming next year it's not going to come this year because they still have to fine tune the car uh, the nose of the e xuv 300 is got mahindra's new design language for electrics which looks cool looks little funky yeah, you don't need uh, no the big air intakes because correct, there's correct. nothing to cool so it's all flush and smooth but did you and on that thing did you see the uh chinese uh, thing the gwm great yes. wall motors they yes. also have got some electrics which you have that small dinky that one small dinky which one. actually looks quite cute yes so yes. we'll come to great wall motors so mm. that was at mahindra they also had the funster concept but that is like some of the other i did not like the funster yeah. concept because i think it was done very much in a hurry mm. uh didn't look the part even as a show car you know i think they did it quickly I also understand why they would have done it because the key thing is that what did Mahindra not show? Mm. That was that was most significant question to mm. Mm. ask, and yeah. they have got what did not show is the Thar. Are you hinting at the Thar? Not just the that, they have got the new XUV 5W. Yes, yes, they have got three other vehicles. So I think that is also so very logical an approach by that company. So yes the so funster was there to make up for that so the funster the nose on the funster something like that could be on the xuv 500 right because if you look at the pictures that they released i i, I think i think it looks suv ish right yeah it looks basically mahindra's uh, dna is suv yes so they cannot force it or they should not give that thing up yeah. but funster as i see it an open suv like that mm-hmm. with a scissor doors and what not they were too many elements which uh, or the treatment of the elements which left a lot to be desired so if you're listening to this podcast on soundcloud or apple podcast or whatever we also have this podcast on the evo india youtube channel that is evo india and on that we've got pictures images and footage of all the cars that we're talking about so you will be able to see what we are talking about uh, will you'll be able to really actually relate to it absolutely the funster it's an suv with its roof chopped off and it's got scissor doors so it is kind of uh, no too hard cape it's it was a much. show it's a show car pure and simple but the other concept that really really wowed us and which nobody really expected maybe adil had some inkling about it nobody expected was the tata sierra no the thing is that before we go to that let's talk one more aspect of mahindra they had the stall device into different themes mm-hmm. so you had technology for propulsion technology for safety technology for electrification so where there for propulsion they have to be given the due for their turbo gdi mm-hmm. power plants completely indigenously done from 1.2 liters on to 1 and a half liter capacity and then to a 2 liter displacement yes and i asked rajan valera and he said they could be an engine uh, in a larger displacement if they need to mm-hmm. so mind is not forcing the ic engine at all yes so it's great that they have invested in that thing and the safety aspect Tata's and Mahindra's are they contribute seven cars among the top ten 
safest cars in the country and i think that deserves a round oh yes applause. absolutely really? so like i said uh, we keep saying indian manufacturers indian, make yeah, shipboxes yeah, yeah. but they actually make the safest cars yeah, they make the safest and it's been proven yes. globally you know it's not been proven by yes. uh, an indian body yes. rubber stamping yeah. it has been proven up front across the board so yes so as far as mahindra is concerned uh, a lot of great things so that came there so there was uh, turbo uh, gdi gdi engines they are called m stallion m stallion from the uh, hawk from, from the diesels there that's the first uh, turbo petrol engine range complete range in completely india. done in, in india. india and that will go into future fords and sanyongs they have so to, this is yeah. a domestic manufacturer I, i'm just thinking that about is exporting engine I'm, ju- I'm, i'm just thinking aloud uh, during world war 2 when the jeep came out the jeep was uh, because uh, willys didn't have the capacity of bantam which was originated didn't have the capacity so it was given to ford and willys to make the bulk of the cars and the ford and the willys jeep were virtually similar excepting for certain detailed differences i think the wheelers turn full circle mm-hmm. mahindra will once again be giving engines and who knows the next car which is coming out could also be badge as a ford true and the next uh, yeah. the xuv 500 will also spawn a ford yes absolutely yeah, for india and for certain absolutely. export markets so it's the future is exciting let me tell you that and the future is driven by indian manufacturers Ab- why not why not yeah, it should and yeah. now we should come back to my show stopper yeah. the tata sierra yeah the tata sierra i was speaking with one other designer who works in pinin farina mm-hmm. who used to work so he's not pinin farina he was there with ferrari design and then he went to another uh, company so he said some of the other he did not like the design language on the sierra because it go- went away from the impact 2.0 mm-hmm. design mm-hmm. i think he missed the point completely the sierra was never supposed to mirror that design mm-hmm. language mm-hmm. just because of that it had to go a different way and thank god it went a different way because completely different yet has skews of the original tata sierra which was something i loved to death yeah because at that time when the mm-hmm. sierra was launched okay i was a kid you were i think you had you were in automotive yes. journalism i was reading a stuff in car and bike international right. in pune there was a green sierra that was done up by dc that was that that done by that was my car with my friend we had done yeah. that so that used to run around yes. near where i used to live and man you saw that and was like shit one day i want to forget test it and all of that one day i want to sit in that yeah, it, it looked, looked so it, it looked a million bucks you know yeah. it looked so a million bucks of course it had issues but that was yeah, yeah. maybe probably ahead of its time whatever but this new sierra it started it, tata's uh, automotive journey you know yeah this new sierra uh, pratap post told me that it is it reimagines the past but it's not a slave to the past true it it need not be yeah. it need so not be so it's got the tata family look going on at the front but on the sides in profile especially the glasses it looks like the sierra and there is practicality so not on that. one side yeah, correct. the payment side it's got a sliding door so it is got access to the rear it's not just a three door and not just that if you care to see inside so many elements are there where it hints at the original there are some caricatures there the journey is driven from the early 90s to yeah. 2020 so i think by and large it's a great tribute yeah and it's with the uh, modern engineering absolutely. modern air conditioning and tata motors recent push towards quality i don't think people sitting at the back are going to bake anymore in the old sierra yeah. they used to have yeah there was a free and, oven <laughs> true 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 but i say i think think that gives a good hint at the future yeah if electric cars are as delicious to look and like the tata sierra i might just consider my thoughts on that but to the present I doubt anyone would have expected Tata's to steamroller everyone. Gravitas, the Hornbill, the new Harrier, Harrier the Winger, the, the Winger, no, even the Hexa Safari Edition. Yeah. I think with everything, and they are all production ready. Yes. Yes. They look at all out of place. So with the Sierra, uh, Tata Motors' official line is that they are going to look at uh, reactions from showgoers to the Sierra and then decide about production. But this actually can go into production. So details. It's based on the Alpha Arc platform, but which is the Siri, same Tata. Siri, but very platform. important thing, whatever Tata has done in the last five years, whether be at Geneva or at Auto Expo, every vehicle has come into production. Yeah. So just think about that aspect. Yeah. So rest easy after that. 
So it's based on the Alpha Arc platform, which is the Altros platform, and they said that it can be scaled up or scaled Correct. down. Correct. Uh, it's also a five-star global and cap rated platform. So is this that platform electrification? They already have electrics in the Nexon EV. The, the Ziptron technology is yes. really superb. And Pratap said that why only electric? Because it has yeah. got a bonnet. Right, you can put an IC engine into it, so it will be electric plus conventional right. IC engine. I just think because if you put in a good 1.5 liter petrol engine yes. in it, yeah, and take the fight to the Brezza. Uh, I don't think Brezza. I think yeah. maybe Creta. No, this, this whatever. Be no, whatever. I whatever say. Yeah. The Brezza is a big seller. Yeah, they have got a new engine in the Brezza, yeah. uh, and. Uh, I think this it's, can go against the the Creta, the Celtos. That is the meat of the market. I, I, I think every every, every yeah. other uh, SUV which is there is fair game for the Sierra. Yeah, right? yeah. It's fair game. And for the I Sierra. think I honestly believe within twelve to eighteen months mm. we will see this Sierra on the road. Be more than that, look at the Hornbill. Let's go before yeah. the so Sierra that is comes. The HBX. In, yeah. ha, so the the Hornbill itself mm. will what do you call make because as I see it, the new Creta or the new uh, Brezza. Is still the same. Are they not new Brezza? We'll come to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the, oh, this is what uh, this is a easy terminology with uh, every of the Indian car, all new, all, all new, new, because just they got a new grill. Yeah. And, uh, so I know that. Yeah. But if you care to see the HBX really pushes the envelope further, and I liked what I saw with that special job they had mm -hmm, done for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And truly, I think. Uh, Tata Motors has got the back end and everything sussed right. Now, if only they can deliver on the front end, mm. I think uh, a lot of manufacturers will be under terrific uh, pressure from these days. So, the HBX to elaborate, that is a mini SUV. So, you have the Nexon and this will slot in below, below. the Nexon. So, it's not going to take on the Nexon. There won't be cannibalization True. within the range. Uh, the HBX, what is there at the show stand and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see images and footage of it right now. The HBX, if you ignore that high stance, if you ignore those off-roady tires yeah. and that or uh, the roof carrier and all of that, that is the car that you will be able to buy within the next five, six months? Yes. Like very this, soon. This year, you'll have two cars coming across or three cars. The Harrier Automatic comes immediately. Yeah. The Gravitas follows straight off from there. Uh, the Hexa Safari Edition is already there. And then the HBX comes in at the time of the festival season. Yes. So, three cars, all SUV. So, I don't know who's an SUV maker in India. Yeah. Or who's a car maker. Who's a car Everybody's maker. making SUVs. <laughs> SUVs. So, the HBX, this will be out. It will look more or less like the concept car that you see. And Tata Motors has got, uh, no, they've shown that whatever they should do in terms of a concept, more or less that is what's there in the it, production. It, it isn't mandated. This thing got mandated, uh, I think, when the uh, Arya debacle happened mm -hmm. uh, more than about 10, 15, 12 years ago. And then they decided we have to do whatever we do. Now it has got to have immediate uh, translation into production. So only do uh, concepts which are production oriented mm. and nothing else. Yeah. And I think they followed it right from that time onward. So they also had the Gravitas. The Gravitas is the seven seat Harrier. Uh, and it's very well done. Very well done. I think I struggled to get into the third row. But, yeah, but I think for that India, seven, yeah, it, that it's just that to say that I've got correct, a seven-seater. Correct. Nobody correct. uses that third row, but people want that third row. But if row. you look at the way the roof line has been designed for that, it no longer swoops down. Mm -hmm. it is a, so they have re-engineered the rear end. I think it's also slightly larger than It is that. larger. It's got a longer wheel. Longer wheel yeah. And I think overall, if you see the proportions and the presence, it's been done well. It doesn't look tacky as if they've yeah, just yeah. stretched it. It has done. It's been done in a very good manner, you know. And they have the automatic Hexa with the 170 yes. horsepower engine. So more power, automatic gearbox. True, true. Uh, this is what the Hexa should. So not Hexa, sorry, Harrier. Harrier should have. This been. is what the Harrier should have been at the start, but better late than never. What Tata Motors will have to do now is to bring the Harrier back into people's mindsets true, and bring it back true. into the consideration set very because true. right now very it has true. dropped off. True. So that is a task. But now, looking at the entire range, at the biggest pavilion at the Auto Expo... You know, look at those trucks. Yeah. Those trucks. Tata too. Motors should be able to sell now. With then that they, kind of range, yes, they have it, to be able to sell. I, I hope they have not uh, spent their entire marketing budget on the display at Auto Expo. <laughs> because uh, one more thing comes to mind because this design of the stall mm. was done, done by an out, outside agency. It was done oh. by Tata Motors designers themselves. Yeah, Pratap yeah. Bose, Ajay Sharma, 
all Hajit Sharan, everyone, they really configured what to do. Mm-hmm. When when you see people within the company take that onus on themselves yeah. to do it, and look at the thing they borrowed this idea from BMW in Frankfurt with the Nexons running on top. Yeah, the Nexon the EVs are running around within the stand yeah. at the auto yeah. expo and giving rides to whoever wanted. Yes, to. I think it it really what you call felt very nice to see an Indian manufacturer take the lead and. Uh, lead by example, you know. So, if you're going to the Auto Expo this weekend, do check out the Tata Motor stand. They're running a contest where you can get a ride in the Nexon EV at the stand. So, within the stand itself, they created a track. So, you can do that ride over there. You should definitely check out the HBX. You should definitely check out the Harrier, uh, which is uh, almost production ready. You should check out the Sierra for sure. Also, the commercial vehicles. Now, I don't know much about commercial vehicles, but I can say that those look damn good. No, I know the, the fact of the matter is that the Winger, which is an ex Renault product earlier, they have brought it up to speed for uh, the Indian market. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was something which they, I believe they had neglected for a long mm-hmm. time. Yeah. So it needed a refresh. Uh, but if you look at the Prima with the new uh, Cummins uh, engine, which is there. It's the world's largest selling diesel the, engine the for Cummins, commercial vehicles. Yeah, the Cummins 6.7 litre engine is the world's largest. Mm. Uh, they have standardized that in all their primers across the board. But forget about the primers. And primers came in, they had about 5-6 primers in different applications, tipper, uh, tractor, etc. You'd have looked at the star bus, the electric star bus mm-hmm. which was there. Mm. Wonderful bus. Yeah. Wonderful bus. Everything their own technology again. I think so there is quite a... So, don't get dazzled just by the cars. Look at the commercial vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a good time to hold on to your Tata Motor shares. Huh? Of good course. Good time yeah. to buy some Tata Motor shares also. Good time to buy them also. See, we also give you practical buying <laughs> advice. Yeah. And if you make some money on this, go out and buy a nice car or motorcycle for yourself. Yeah. yeah do yourself a favor. <laughs> so, moving on from Tata Motors and Mahindra, the two big Indian manufacturers. Let's rewind back to Monday, the start of the Auto Expo, two days before the start of the Auto Expo, where the Volkswagen Group, which has now been rechristened the Skoda Auto Volkswagen Group in India, they showcased their two platforms, their two new SUVs for India, which are going to be launched uh, early next year. Yeah. So Skoda had a full concept. It was called the Vision Iron. And Volkswagen, well, that looked almost production ready. That was the Tiguan. This is based on the MQB A0 Iron platform. Iron means it has India. been Indianized. Now, Guru Pratap Boparai, who is the boss of the group in India, he was at pains to stress that the torsional rigidity of the Indian SUVs will be the same as the international SUVs. Yeah, I, I don't think, why should it be differ? Because so they it hasn't got, been cheapened. No, 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 it cannot be, be. Because we always think that if anything has been Indianized, it means it has been cheapened. That is one thing is the Indians have to change their mindset. They have to change their approach to thinking. Yes. Know? Yes. We are not living in the days of the premiers and the ambassadors of this world. Yeah where R&D was more done in Delhi in the corridors of power rather than in the precincts of their own companies. It's a different change across the world. So, if there are any engineers listening to this, uh, what uh, Gurpada Boparai, he said that they have now adapted this platform to use Indian steel. The Polo, for instance, which is made in India, uses imported steel. Ten years after it came to India, it still uses imported steel. And that's why the price is very high. He's saying that the torsional rigidity will remain the same, but to adapt to Indian steel, they've had to change the radii, they had to change the parts, sure. uh, the angles. But to retain that torsional rigidity. So, it will be uh, like all Volkswagens. They're very safe. It, yeah. But, but it, it, say, it said something for what Volkswagen was not doing earlier. Yes. True. So, True. finally, the sheer economics of the case of survival for them. Yes. They needed to rethink the business. Yeah. So, this will go up against the Creta and Seltos. I think it will be positioned, and they said it also in as many words, that it will be positioned between a compact SUV and the Creta. So there is that little bit window where there's nobody. I think so. And they will be positioned over there, which means it might undercut the Creta Seltos on no, pricing. I think every the potents of this are very good. It's a good, smart theory, uh, smart approach, because they have a 180,000 unit per annum plant, mm-hmm. and it's not even one third, 52,000 yes. units is what... It has done at, at best in yes, a year. Yeah. So, if you have to do that, you have to give a uh, appealing uh, product, a uh, performing product, and a product which is priced well. They have to do that. The price positioning will exactly have to what you call follow what 
uh Volkswagen said yeah so in terms of performance what Adil said it will have a 1 liter turbo petrol engine a TSI engine that will be the base engine which will be their volume engine it will be made here yeah, in India absolutely and they will also have a 1.5 turbo petrol engine for performance enthusiasts and Stefan Knapp who is the head of the Volkswagen brand in India he said the GT line for Volkswagen in India is very strong there's True. a lot of takers for it in fact the Polo more than half of it are the GT cars that are sold right now yeah because that's the only thing which appeal to people exactly so they will have a GT line so you'll have a Tiguan GT with the 1.5 TSI engine they will have the DSG gearbox because that is their uh, no this is the brand I, strength I, I think they have to what you call do everything sir so that the DSG gearbox proliferates massively across yeah. the board you know and they're talking about between 92 to 95 percent localization which is a very very high order uh, Maruti Suzuki when they said 95% we said wow so much Volkswagen 90 to 95% yeah, in 10 years in India so that is a strong sure, statement sure, sure, very strong sure, statement sure. Uh, I think they look very good oh, uh, I love what do you think I, I love both cars I love both of them come I, on I, let me I, put you in the spot no it's not about uh, my wife would say she loves the Skoda because it's got lots of glitzy lights <laughs> on <them. laughs> but that's the concept so that <laughs> yeah, won't be there in the production yeah, but, whatever. <laughs> but, but I like that the Tycoon carries on the same family philosophy on styling, minimal uh, garnishing on top, but she's set well on the road and I like the car, I like the car. So if you're going to the Expo, the stuff that you should look out for, let's go to the Skoda stand first. There is the Octavia RS, uh, which is now higher mm -hmm. horsepower. Uh, it's uh, I think 200 or 250 units they bring to India. Uh, they're saying that uh, Zach Hollis, who's the yeah. brand director for Skoda and India, he said that those cars are almost all spoken for. I asked the head of uh, communications that when are we getting a test car? And he said, bro, all cars sold out. No cars for the media. So if any of you buy a new RS, give us a tinkle, we'll come and do a story on it. <laughs> so they had the RS, the Karok is coming to India. That was announced. The face lifted superb is coming very soon and I think it looks superb. Yes, absolutely. They had one in red with yes. all the black accenting. True, true. Damn good. This is a big limousine. You know, it's a stretched I, Passat. It's and a actually, long car. Actually, as I see it, Skoda, which spearheaded the VW group in India, ought to be doing all this yes. and it's been now let go and say, come on, go and make your fortune. And I think it's showing across. So, that. funky cars on the Skoda yes. stand. On the Volkswagen stand, it is all SUVs and this oh, is their pivot. Minute, there was one very great car on the Skoda stand which was the original Superb mm -hmm. from the late 1930s. Only about 120 were built and there are only four remaining in the world, existing in the world and that was one of them. So check that car out yeah. as well. Not for sale? Not for sale. <laughs> Not launching it. It came soon. from the Skoda Museum. Okay, so <laughs> that historic car at the Skoda Museum and over at Volkswagen, all uh, SUVs. So this is they're going to say they're going to launch four SUVs over the next two years. It's going to be the SUVification Correct. of the Volkswagen brand in India. Uh, obviously the Tiguan. Then they have the T-Rock. Now what is that, the T-Rock? That's coming quick, quick, very, very very quickly. Very quickly. It'll be imported. It'll be a mm. CBU or a CKD. I think it'll be a CBU. Mm. Uh, it'll be small numbers. It's based on the Golf platform. So it is slightly raised uh, Golf, which looks cooler. I drove it in Europe. It handles really well. Nice engines, nice interiors. Uh, a great uh, plug-in before the Tycoon comes in for the volumes Correct. to keep Volkswagen uh, up Formally, in everybody's yeah, uh, minds. Uh, then they have the uh, Tiguan Allspace which is the longer wheelbase Tiguan, which has got uh, three rows of seats. Now, the one mm -hmm. at the show stand I had uh, suitcases in the boot because that yeah. isn't the uh, three row. That's not the seven seater. But the uh, Tiguan all space will come to India in the seven seat configuration. Uh, and what else? The most, had, uh, the most important thing for my perspective of Volkswagen, apart from the new uh, cars which they're going to build in India, they recommitted themselves for the next three, four years for, to motorsport. And I think that's a very, very good thing. And the thing was, not just from Volkswagen side, from Skoda Auto, Volkswagen India, Boparoy himself said, we have to carry this program on. And I think that's a fantastic, what do you call, commitment to motorsport and coming from the highest levels. So, in fact, Indian motorsport is in such great hands. And by the same yardstick, 
it's such a dismal state that others are not emulating Volkswagen. Yeah, and it was so important for Volkswagen mm-hmm. that they had a press conference to showcase their new race yeah. polo. Yeah. That has never been done. Never been. It's been shown at Auto Expos, but Correct. for the first time, they Correct. had a press conference. So, Sirish Visa, who you heard on this podcast, the last podcast, in fact, was with Sirish Visa. He was on the Volkswagen stand on the second day of the Auto Expo, and he showcased the new race polo. Now, what's new? It's got five horsepower more. The body shape is moved to the Polo, so they started their whole journey in motorsport with the Polo. So Polo, Vento, Emio, now back to the Polo. 10 years of Volkswagen Motorsport in India. 5 horsepower more from the 1.8 TSI now that's engine. Push to pass. But push to pass, so you get a boost of 20 bhp. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was telling Suresh Visa that next to the push to pass, they should have maybe a PTM button. So you get <laughs> one free push to pass, yeah. and then every time you want more, you press the PTM button, kaching, and you get another push to pass. They'll so, make a fortune that way. Yeah, yeah. So that's a trademark so. idea. If Volkswagen does that, uh, 10% mm. commission towards our new motorcycles. Uh, it's got a nice new livery on it, uh, a big wing. And uh, Sirish Visa, the boss of Volkswagen Motorsport, he said that it'll be faster because they've got better tires from MRF. So they've worked with MRF on new rubber. A, lo- a lot of things they have done. Overall, they have More done a lot, work. a lot of work. Has gone in. And the testing starts on Monday. So this coming Monday, the testing of the race polo starts mm-hmm. at the Chennai race track. So that is at Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. So Adil, now who do you want to move to? Let's talk about the industry leader, Maruti. And uh, very important, when you look at that, they didn't have much to show. They had a lo- very large display. Very loud also. <laughs> Yeah, at times very loud as well. Uh, they had the Concept Futuro E, which would have looked at home in Tokyo. Very funky, went with the Japanese ethos, looked out of place here in Noida. Uh, having said that, again, they had nothing to show as far as new metal is concerned for real world use in India. They Surely they had the Brezza a little bit tarted up, looked the same as the old. I never saw any differentiation yes. there. They have a new engine, the K15. It's a good engine. It's really one of the better engines uh, in the business in India. But yes, so what you wanted to see new was not there. They had the Ignis, which came out again with a little tarted up stuff. Same thing. They had the Ertiga. But what I failed to understand and failed to understand from so many uh, barring Tatas and Mahindras, why do they have to stagger these things which are not brand new vehicles? Stretched across three days. Yes. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think, are they trying to hide something or use that to overcome the lack of new cars? Some of the, it didn't, uh, what do you call, gel well with the thought process. And the half an hour press conference, there's not much to talk about for half an hour. So half of it was just sound and noise and dum, 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 dum. It was crazy. It was, it, it didn't make any sense. And then to call all this all new, and let's be honest, no, say it's a facelift. When just say it's got a new when engine. Hero Honda, for 12 years of the charisma, would always say from the first year to the 12th year, say all new charisma. It was the same. So this all new thing has been done to death. I swear it. And you <laughs> saw, saw that in the Vitara, you saw it in the yeah. Ignis. In it's, fact, to me, the only significant thing was the Swift Hybrid. And Maruti Suzuki, they said that they are going to now look at strong hybrids. Now, strong hybrid is a hybrid as a hybrid is supposed to be. A mild hybrid is not a hybrid or a smart hybrid is not a hybrid. So, they're looking at hybrids. But then, in the same breath, they also said that the hybrid story is the same as electric because the cost will be as much as electric. So, I don't know where they're going with it. I I, I think that they are grappling with too many things which they are not on top of. Since we spoke about the Swift, how could Maruti have forgotten... That is the 15th anniversary of the Swift. Mm. There's not mm. a single mention of the uh, anniversary of the Swift. And it is one of the most, what do you call? Most popular, loved hatchback. Most price. loved, yeah. no, performance-oriented yes. cars for yeah. the money, you know. This would have been the time to bring a Swift yeah. spot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, what uh, we were looking for, the Jimny. No, that no, is not there. <laughs> no, there's nothing to appeal to the enthusiasts. And we all no, grew up with no, Marathis. Not, not just about it. Today... Just think about, I've said this before also, once you get in the realm of uh, electrification and whatnot and all that, if you don't have a car which delights the performance oriented, and I don't mean you have to make Ferrari beat us, but in its class, you don't give performance oriented offerings, Maruti will be history if mm-hmm. they don't do that. Yes. And I don't think that they are on top of that thought process. Yes. So I grew up with a Zen. 
Yeah, and exactly. I loved it because of exactly. its performance. It was exactly. never meant to be a performance car, but True. it handled it. Uh, the True. engine was True. so sweet. True. The exactly. esteem, all of those cars. Exactly. And I, as I see it across over there, this is, I see, and I saw this across the board, apart from the Indian manufacturer, I saw it across the board from everyone. Every other OEM was trying to justify itself with very glitzy uh, press releases, bombarding us with stuff which saw the car in make-believe situations. I think the Indian public now has gone away from yeah. the Maru, from the yeah. Ambassador Fiat era, past the Maruti era and now real world, what is, can be, can do. I don't think I saw that from Maruti. So that was at Maruti. Next door, there was Renault. Uh, Renault showed the automatic driver. The yes. automatic driver yes. is coming in the next two, three months. True. Uh, okay, that's not as significant as something else on the stand. And that was the new 1.3 turbo petrol engine. That turbo petrol engine will be made in India. It will be a modular engine. So the one liter version will go into the mm. Quid and the Triber. So the Triber with the turbo petrol engine will be a good, nice, fun car to drive. The 1.3 turbo petrol is going to go into the duster. Renault, like many other manufacturers, is going to be no diesels from April. So that uh, their diesel engine, that 1.5 DCI engine, which was the car that really put India onto this whole dieselization mm -hmm. trend, that's going to be no more because that's not going to be upgraded to BS6 standards. So this turbo petrol engine in the duster will make around 150 horsepower. So the duster, it always had the best ride and handling package for typical Indian roads, not super smooth roads, Correct. but a typical Indian road is not smooth. And the duster, still it rides and handles better than anything else. Now with this performance engine, the 150 horsepower but there engine. But the duster is coming as well, very shortly. Uh, it's next just year. a lipstick job. Yeah. No, so I hope they come with the next generation duster, which should have come instead of the capture. Yes. Yeah. But having said that, I think... One other car which was very significant there in the stand was the Equid, mm -hmm. which they make in uh, China. China and which is under serious concentration for India. And if you think about where, what Renault does, Renault does its business by in every segment it is in, trying to give best pricing value proposition to the consumers. They are looking at trying to do that. If they have the to do the democratization of the electric vehicle in for the masses. The equity if they can get that thinking right, like how Mahindra has got yes, that yeah. thing right, that yeah. will have tremendous promise. Yeah. Sub 10 lakhs, maybe around 8 lakhs. Eight -ish, yeah, exactly. That exactly. will work. Exactly. It will definitely exactly. work. So that was at Renault. Uh, something that not too many would really be looking at in terms of their buying consideration, but which looks stunning to me and I'm sure to Adil, was the new Gurkha. Force Motors is the third Indian company which uh, made an impression in uh, at Auto Expo. The Gurkha, I've been after it, I've been nurtured it in every aspect since 1998. 22 years, really proves better late than never. Mm -hmm. Great body work now, the interiors, the steering column, everything has been re-engineered, ergonomics, etc. Finally, that car can be worthy of what you call acceptance by any and everyone who wants to look at it. So I should go into the specifics. This is an all new Gurkha. It looks like the old Gurkha, but that is deliberate because the old Gurkha looked superb Correct. because it was based on the styling of the G-Wagon. The G-Wagon. The old is the, G yeah, it is the Indian G. It is, uh, no, it relates to the OG. Uh, so it looks cool. It's got now all LED lighting. So the DRLs that you see, the lights are all LED. It is crash compliant. Yes. The main thing on this new Gurkha and this whole platform, it's a modular platform, which is also shared with the tracks commercial vehicle range and that is why uh, force motors had the money to do the gurkha because the commercial vehicle Correct. range sells very well they are very they are very price conscious yes even uh, trying to what you call be very frugal in how they spend a, every naya paisa for development so it should what we call earn at least 10 times whatever they put in mm -hmm. and which is a nice thing and they have done it's a good thing for shareholders so uh, you want to buy got, shares buy share force motors and, shares and the also. force motors shares are the really the most profitable, I think, in the automotive industry today in India. See, more sensible consumer advice. <laughs> so, uh, the new Gurkha has got that same, retains the same styling. The engine is the 2.6. The 2.2 is not there anymore. The 2.6 has engine. been upgraded to BS6 and that is the engine that is going to go across the range. Force Motors will not have a petrol. They'll continue with diesel and diesel is what's required in something like True. this, to be True. honest. Modular platform. So, what was shown was a three-door. 
they will also have a longer wheelbase five door this three door it's had forward facing middle row now it might not sound like a big deal but the gurkha up until now Correct. had two front seats which were forward facing and piche at the back it had a bench bench which was very 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 uncomfortable now this has got a forward facing two captain seats at the rear also uh, and then at the back jump seat so even though this was a small little thing it could seat six yeah but i don't think you want to ever carry more than two if you <laughs> want to you got to do that uh, maybe you need four no if you go off roading so yes. one spotter one this <laughs> one to get your water but, one to get your but sandwiches but have you if you think about it look at the ergonomics of the car they are completely changed where earlier you had the steering wheel like a commercial vehicle in this plane now you have it in the car plane yeah. and i think that's a very significant move they completely changed those uh, geometry there and it is perfect now the new dashboard the yeah, new, so new dashboard finish, yes everything so a lot of uh, things they learned from the rainforest challenge gurkhas which they had made and i think competition does improve the breed better late than never there as well so this right now is the only 4x4 in this car category which has a proper hard top now yeah, full the earlier a air conditioning yes so the earlier gurkha had a lot of wind noise and all that True. because the panel gap so huge you could post a book through it you could post others book through that <laughs> now the panel gaps are tight the door shut like a proper car Correct. with a thud not a clang Uh, so it sounds modern uh, the rear glass house it is flush fitting True. so there won't be any gaps so it is more civilized uh, what uh, more Prasen urbanized Ferodia. as well you know it's yeah. very urbanized and prasan ferodia yeah. is a person who has many g's many g's <laughs> and i think he wants to do it what they had really created what his father had created more than 30 years ago yeah so i said that this is more civilized he corrected me and it uh, and, and he said this has been tamed now they always had the off roading chops this yes. retains the locking Correct. differentials yeah what he's done is made it more livable so now you can actually buy this you can use it to commute and then you can use it for your weekend uh, mud plugging i love the car and i love the special also which was built on the chassis of the rainforest challenge gurkha which was along do check that car out it, it is, is something a, which is it's a monster monster and i love it to bits <laughs> the thing to which really shocked me the axles these are portal yeah. axles now go google that after you uh, listen to this podcast go google that portal axles these portal axles are from the mercedes unimog now go and watch some unimog videos also so this gurkha concept at the expo stand could do stuff that a unimog can do because it's got the unimog axles but you have to That's understand one, yeah but you have to understand something which they didn't show and why this all these things have happened the gurkha is now the basis for the light strike vehicle for the indian army and they've already delivered over 3 400 vehicles to the indian army and more are on the anvil so if the gurkha after so many years finally they, it was not the army's fault or it was it was basically the reticence of force motors themselves to apply mm-hmm. for the army thing yeah. so when they applied 3 years ago and they got that thing through suddenly the army is now really understanding that they needed this light strike vehicle much earlier so a light strike vehicle is something that can be delivered by choppers yes so a drop chopper takes it, it drops it in enemy, enemy lines. lines it's a fast quick Uh, attack vehicle correct uh, the indian army has got rocket launchers and uh, no high powered guns on it in fact it's being shown right now at the def expo def expo yeah. the defense expo uh, which the prime minister inaugurated yeah, right. that uh, pictures in the times of yeah. india with him with a yeah. gun so <laughs> so there's another expo going on yeah, i think it's in lucknow right yes yeah so that's going on there so that was at the force motor stand in fact we've done walk around videos of all the vehicles that we're talking about you should check out our but, youtube channel but, but and folks also what we mentioned about the new t1 van which they have got all monocoque which goes beyond the traveler state of the art really top notch vehicle which they have made it for global market applications i think you got to also go and look at that way and ready for electrification yes yes so they will have an electric version on this platform because True. they're uh, importers because they've got distributors all over the world Correct. they've been asking for that and now they've delivered all engineered here in house in, in pune in pune already. yeah so that was force motors like i said uh, you should watch the videos we've done videos on all the important vehicles it's on our youtube channel at evo india check that out uh, moving on to the let's other house let's do let's do the two koreans yes let's do yeah. hyundai and kia yeah both of them same family bitter rivalry sibling mm-hmm. rivalry 
to the fore. Seltos really took the thunder away from the crater. Hyundai tried to stem the tide with the venue which was a little bit, which came earlier than the Seltos. And then the new crater which they revealed. So this new Creta, uh, it's the same platform as the Seltos. The Seltos platform is the updated Creta platform. So it's the group platforms. The engines will be the same. So you'll have the same 1.4 turbo petrol engine. You'll have the same 1.5 diesel because the 1.6 diesel is not BA6 compliant. So it'll go to the 1.5. And that's why the Creta, it will be launched in March. Before BA6 comes in, there will be a new Creta. So you should watch out for that. In terms of the design language, it moves more towards the Palisade. Uh, mm. It's got more vertical lighting elements, whereas so the Kias, they've got horizontal, horizontal. lighting elements. The Celtos has got a lot of these horizontal lighting elements. The Hyundai has got vertical styling elements. And that's typically why, Korean. Yeah. So that's why when you put the two side by side, mm. they don't look identical yeah. at all. They look completely different. And I think that's important. Because of course. Otherwise, of course. how does the Celtos and Creta, they'll just fight no, amongst you, you themselves. Cannot, you cannot have a Ventor, uh, Skoda Rapid yes. sort of situation. You know, just the badges differ. You have to have product characterization should be absolutely different. So the performance will be more or less the same. Uh, I think the Hyundai will uh, veer a little bit more towards uh, comfort and luxury, whereas the will Kia have... will be slightly more sporty, slightly, not that much. Mm. Uh, but I think it's interesting times and going by the... Let's see how they price it, you know. The, the key thing now yes, will be pricing. Yeah. yeah. But well, going by the sales of the Seltos, the mm. Creta also has great potential. And of course. The Creta, of course. What, it, what it did for Hyundai... It moved Hyundai to the next level. Because because what they did and what uh, uh, Maruti did, Hyundai came with so many different options, engine options, transmission options, price points across the range, whereas the Brezza only had diesel mm -hmm. and they did that. But because of Maruti's name, that one single model could take on those many. But not to say that the Creta didn't do the numbers. Creta also did the numbers. Now, let us see how this shift happens because the Creta will have to contend with the Seltos and it will also have to contend with the rest of the uh, rivals as well. Yes. So uh, at Hyundai, the Creta was unveiled by Shah Rukh Khan. It was a Mela over there uh, with Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, they also launched the new Tucson. So new means it's an updated Up Tucson with BS6 engines, but they have both the diesel as well as the petrol Correct. in BS6. Uh, fresh styling. Again, like I said, Hyundai said very clearly, very emphatically actually, they don't want to do away with diesel. Mm. So I think... Uh, Which is, is very smart. Yeah, because, absolutely. You know, they've got all the diesel engines to BS6 compliance. Now, Volkswagen is not going to have any diesel engines come here. That April. also I feel is a wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, and I asked uh, Shashank Srivastava Maruti why. And, and I think that it is Maruti's inability to get an equivalent diesel from another source. Mm. Which And they say we are still trying if we get a high powered diesel we may think about it so it just what you call tallied in with my thought process that they were not able to get a proper diesel engine because fiat has gone out of that yes they yeah. they wanted to do something with Peugeot, but i don't think that worked out and whatnot so Marti no diesels, Volkswagen uh, group no diesels, but the Hyundai Motor Group, that is Hyundai as well as Kia, they will continue yeah, sure. to have diesels, sure. at least for the next two years until sure. 2023 when the stage two of the BS6 emission norms kick in. Sure. And at that time, I think diesels would be too expensive for small cars. Small but cars, until yes. then, diesels are there and diesels still work. Diesel is not a dirty fuel. No, it's not. Diesel no cars aren't dirty. The, no, it's just that you have to give a little bit more on the after treatment side, exhaust after treatment which costs a little bit of money. So it becomes prohibitively expensive for small cars, family or it. Yeah. So when you go to a car, crater size and above, I think it works very well there. So uh, Hyundai also had the N-Line cars uh, and N-Line will come to India. They didn't say anything about yeah. it, but you heard it here first. N-Line will come. Yes. So Hyundai is going to make a play on sportiness also. Should. With the N -line. They should. They, they should. should. Because the cars now are capable. Not just that. They can use their successes in the World Touring Car Championship and the World Rally Championship. They are winning there. Yes. They are not yeah. just making the field yeah. there. They have got the world champion yeah. carrying the number one on the I-20 uh, in correct, the correct. Rally Championship. Absolutely. In the World Rally Championship. Yeah, absolutely. So, fantastic. I don't know if you saw the Oitanak's uh, big crash, crash. at uh, the Monte Carlo Rally. You should see that. Wow. That also is and one hell of a... A ride <laughs> downstream. <laughs> <laughs> but testimony to the strength of modern sure, rally cars. Sure, that you walked sure. out unscathed, unscathed from that. It's tremendous. Yeah, correct. Word. So that was at Hyundai. Let's move over to Kia. Kia had the Sonnet. Now the Sonnet is the venue, but with Kia styling on it. 
I think it looks nicer than when, the new. Oh yes, for yeah. sure. For it, sure. It looks really nice. And on the uh, engineering side, it's again the same as the venue, but the Sonnet will get the IMT transmission. Now the IMT, uh, they're calling the intelligent manual transmission. It is a clutchless manual. So you have the cost, costing of a manual because the clutch is True. there, it's operated by solenoids. And I think they've developed it in such a way that now you don't have a clutch and you can shift gears without having to, having to use your left foot. It takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, so you have your fun of a manual and when you drive in traffic, the manual gearbox, it troubles your left leg, not your left hand. Your left hand, uh, everybody drives with their hand on the automatic gear lever also. True. So your left leg is still relaxing and your left hand is moving and working the gearbox. So if they can price this well, you know, if you can undercut an AMT transmission with the IMT transmission, it actually is will, will be difficult yeah, but it, but if it can be done it will revolutionize yeah, this so, whole game across so it. like how amt's turned things around the imt could do that version 2.0 of that true, turnaround true, true. nice looking uh, they didn't let us see the interiors they just showed us sketches similarly the creta it was that locked we correct. could peek in and see the interiors but right. uh, we couldn't open the car both these are coming very soon. Like I said, uh, in March, Hyundai is going to have the Tucson, it's going to have the, the Creta. It'll also have the facelift on the Verna. So the Verna will look somewhat like the new Elantra. Uh, so Hyundai has got a lot. I saw the yeah. new uh, uh, concept which shows the next generation design language. It looked just like a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Complete hey, Ferrari uh, Pidin Farina <laughs> ripoff. Uh, Adil Fer Ferraris at affordable prices. What's not to like? Same with the Gurkha, uh, G Wagon at no, an but, affordable price. But a uh, <laughs> thing with. Look like that with a four-cylinder engine is not my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> so that was with the two Koreans, mm -hmm. and then to move to the little further down the hall to the Chinese. Uh, Great Wall Motors made their brand introduction to India at the Auto Expo. Hall number one, the first hall as you enter the Auto Expo from gate one is Great Wall Motors. And they're going to launch in India with two brands. First is Haval, which is their SUV brand. And the second is GMW, sorry, GWM EV, which is their electric vehicle brand. They've announced that they're going to invest $1 billion into India. Most of it is going to go into acquiring GM's manufacturing facility at, at Talegaon. Talegaon. They are also going to set up a R&D facility. They already have, have an R&D facility yeah. in Bangalore. They are going to expand that. They are going to use India for exports. So this is a big play. I think uh, MG, SAIC, they invested maybe 500 million in India. This is twice. Yeah, I think I think uh, one very clear indication what uh, I can see from this company is that they have to make a play to try to be more Indian in its essence. Mm -hmm. uh, MG has got away with uh, not being considered a Chinese car for a long time because of its uh, MG uh, British leanings. Yes. The MG name came from with fair play, and it's also been treated well by its. The name has been brand has been treated well by its custodians. Great Wall or Hawal. I think is they make 1 uh, million SUVs a year across from the smallest to the largest. Yes. Uh, it's la China's largest, largest SUV, SUV brand and, and China is the world's largest and, and when you, car market. When I went on the stand, it was like glitzy beyond. You needed goggles there <laughs> because there was so much of <laughs> glitz and glitter there. It really, what you call, blinded you to that thing. And that's typically Chinese. They mm. need more lashings of chrome metallic paints etc what cannot be denied is that these are very very glitzy things they can appeal to all the guys in uttar pradesh or <laughs> punjab haryana <laughs> law they might uh, be jarring for guys down south or for the <laughs> gentle west and so yes there is a thing how well they do the business we'll have to yeah. see uh, so I think none the, of the vehicles shown hmm. are going to is going yes, to be launched. Yes. So they are working on a separate vehicle for India. True. Uh, the two things that you should check out are the H7 and the sorry the H9 and the F7. Yes. Now the F series are monocoques. The F7 is sort of a two-saw Tiguan-sized uh, SUV based on a monocoque platform. Uh, 
and i think that is the direction that great wall will move towards with their first uh, launch for india the h9 is uh, a proper ladder frame a large uh, 4x4 with three rows uh, they will probably get a diesel engine for that so this is the two true, directions true. that they're going to be looking at uh, yeah I right now it was an introduction to yes. the brand you know more than anything else what and the there was a lot of excitement around the brand. For huh? sure. When I was walking around, mm-hmm. uh, so I was talking to some of the guys from uh, Great Wall, uh, X Maruti, X uh, General Jinnel, Motors, uh, X uh, Yeah. Uh, and every two minutes, you were interrupted by somebody who said that uh, dealership application kape karna hai. <laughs> so uh, no, it's yeah, people yeah. are coming to them. Yeah, yeah. They showcase their entire range. People were interested in it, mm-hmm. and people were asking, "Where do we sign up?" Uh, at the start of the stand, they also had their EVs. The R1. True. That's a small, cute, dinky I car. I love that thing. I, uh, I really love that What thing. a happy looking car, Yeah, right? very, absolutely. Uh, I love that. Where thing. the SUVs look angry and in your face and no, get the yeah, fuck out of my and way. And no, not only yeah. just that, there was a quirky Chinese styling yeah. across yeah. all that. Well, but the it's grill, The yeah. grills and whatnot are really, <laughs> they, they tried to rip off the Lexus, but they ended up being more grotesque than anything. <laughs> so that is the SUVs, but this uh, small electric vehicle, uh, it is interesting and they are seriously considering it. Others, they would not announce the brand for India. They've announced an EV only brand for India. Uh, their dealership network will start coming up now. Uh, the earliest that we will see a Hubble on the road is early next year. Yeah. Because uh, by October this year, the plant will be handed over. Hmm. I asked a pointed question to Hardeep Singh Brad hmm. that GM's plant, a big part of the investment into the plant went into making the engine line. It was a flexible engine line that could make petrols as well as diesel engines. Obviously, they have the line. Do they have GM's diesel engine? I don't think so. So they will have I to bring think. their own diesel yeah, engine. Yeah, they will do that. So, but they have a diesel. They have a plant. They yeah. have a plant that can make engines, which is a big deal. I, I think one of the key things across, given the way we perceive China as a big, big rival militarily, also let's not mm. forget that we have fought a war with it and we didn't come out uh, best over there. I still have my reservations about the Chinese in every aspect of business. But if they have to commit and they want to safeguard their commitment is only through trade Mm -hmm. and peace. Mm -hmm. So if they can lock down there and they invest in the plant and give it everything to be made here, then yes, I can what you call think. MG has made that sort of a commitment. Yes, yeah. So we got to see from these guys. So speaking about MG, mm. uh, MG had three press conferences. So on the first day, they showed the Marvel X. The uh, second, again, they had also as lavish a display yes. area as uh, any any. Yeah, yeah else. But, but very British. Yeah. I must say, uh, very British. Apri <laughs> <laughs> so, But still, they served us Indian food. <laughs> oh yeah? yeah. Okay, I didn't eat over there. <laughs> that, but but I had yeah. uh, finger food. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the second day, the Hector Plus, mm. and the third day, their big unveil for the Expo. Then that was the Gloucester and the S10 and the uh, yeah and the MG10 MG10 MG10, MG10. Uh, which is their uh, van. So let's uh, cycle back. Let's go to the Hector Plus. Now the Hector Plus is the long rumored, long awaited six slash seven seater version of the Hector. The Hector had the space it was a long car it is a long suv it is a big uh, lot of really space. big suv now they put a third row in it uh, now again third row everybody wants a third row nobody needs a third row True. but now you have the third row crucially mm-hmm. it's also available in a six seater configuration so you get captain seats in the middle which will make it a more comfortable car to be shuffled in and i've always said now the hector is not a great car in terms of its no. handling but in terms of its ride, it is great. Sure. And if you're going to be chauffeur driven, there's a lot of space. There's a Correct. huge panoramic sunroof. You go, hey, MG, do this for me. Hey, MG, do that for you. Now you've got captain seat, so it's more comfortable. So as a chauffeur driven SUV, actually, the Hector makes a lot of sense. And the Hector Plus, they've cleaned up the styling, especially at the rear. So the rear on the Hector has got that fake red uh, band that connects the two tail lamps that has been thrown off. So now you just got your two separate tail lamps, which I think looks neater. And at the front, the grill has been tweaked around, the DRLs have been tweaked around. So it looks a little different from the regular Hector. Hector, Hector Plus, the Hector Plus is coming very soon. That's on the Hector Plus and the Gloucester. Now the Gloucester, uh, before the Auto Expo, they sent out a release where they actually compared the Gloucester in terms of its specs with the Land Cruiser Prado and the Jeep Grand Grand Cherokee. Cherokee. 
that is uh, no smart pr because now <laughs> you're talking about those things and then when you actually launch the gloucester which will undercut the fortune in terms of pricing you say oh shit no look at what they've done so that is a bit of smart uh, or uh, yeah, but, i don't know uh, how you term proof, that but the but proof of the pudding will be in in the driving in the driving so yes they can do all that exercise let's see how it drives so the gloucester is a full size suv based on a ladder frame chassis so it's like the fortuner template there's, there's nothing wrong yeah. in that the there's big engine uh, yeah. we don't know what engine but most likely it will yeah. be the fca 2 liter True. diesel engine uh, maybe they will get the 9 speed automatic mm. which is already there on the compass Correct. so Correct. they might put that in because you need a uh, automatic in a True. vehicle like this three rows of seats lot of space inside the car uh, they didn't let us open the car but the seats look nice well bol- bolstered it had captain seats in the middle row also so it will be we have to see this car when it drives yeah how it drives yeah, in terms of the stance and presence hmm. it is there yeah it is there yeah so it does look in your face and suitably bullying true, true. for other road users and the surprise was the 10 and that is the big mpv, uh, MPV. Uh, it, that space is actually interesting because we didn't talk about the carnival pricing but mm. kia announced the carnival pricing as we expected some between 3 to 5 lakh more than the innova crista uh, though you can't really compare with the innova crista because the carnival is one step above uh, one segment above in terms of its equipment and positioning mm. and all of that but i think very good pricing for the carnival and lot of the innova crista owners who actually wanted an upgrade but didn't have an upgrade so they would buy more innovas one innova after another innova now they will move on to the carnival and uh, at the launch they told us that they got some 3500 bookings and 70% of them were for the limousine edition which is the top top line version uh, and it's logical yeah. it's, all, it's always logical it so like good that. pricing for the carnival uh, it will do great wonders for kia's brand image and on that same lines now mg uh, rajiv chaba who is the president and md of mg motor india he said that that is coming very soon now very soon means couple of months or end of the year or early next year not sure months, six months so six months, six months mg will have this big van and this is i think little bigger than the carnival now yes. i don't i haven't seen this uh, True. dimensions but you got the three rows and behind the third row you have a sizable boot so it's got a lot of space captain seats in the middle it will be comfortable uh, the wheel sizes look typically chinese too small to uh, small yeah so they got better something roads. That, they've got yeah. good roads there so smaller wheels actually work, work over there work over there we don't have good roads yeah but even this could cities. yes so this could actually again redefine that people mover segment the, we, you we must also not forget haima mm-hmm. which is a third chinese manufacturer mm-hmm. we had also got mpv there i sat in that mpv i the ertiga rivals no they are as big as the innova okay terrific car and he said that he would be the guy ronny abraham who mm. is the person there and he told me that they have got enough going for it to price it low than an innova mm-hmm. so all of a sudden the innova is under threat right round mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the low end of the segment to the upper end and what not will the innova survive i think the key thing would be all these new guys will fight among themselves the innova will stand aside and it still keep on doing it and not without reason and innova you sit in a Absolutely. you sit in a taxi that has done 2 and a half lakh kilometers it feels like it's rolled out of the showroom 6 months correct. back correct correct not a squeak not a rattle and uh, how taxis are used in india they really really rugged out and still nothing happens that to it so that's the strength of the innova and that brand strength so it will grow the market true that is for sure true uh, another brand we should talk about is mercedes benz they were the only luxury manufacturer hats off to them for keeping faith with auto expo hats off to them and i think it is befitting the three pointed star that they wanted to say that come what may our commitment to india is there remain I, strong remain strong they had what three or four new launches a lot a lot so, which which i feel again from that uh, rarefied segment of the car market to have that sort of thing happen defies comprehension when you see audi not present bmw not present jl not, not present not pre- volvo so, not present so all of this thing when you look at that no wonder it is the leading luxury car maker in the country they had all the dealers there they had a ton of their customers Absolutely. there in fact outside the gate they had a separate uh, mercedes benz valet parking stand 
where they were inviting the customers so making it easier for the customers to come they had events at this correct, time correct. and the cars we should obviously talk about the cars so the GLE they had launched it beforehand uh, they started off the press conference with the GLE doing the hip hop mm-hmm. thingy with the yeah. no, loud Punjabi music to go with the right. location uh, I don't think you can do this with your GLE. And you, should, you shouldn't do you it. You should not also do it. Others, yeah. you'll come back in five months to the dealer and say my yeah. suspension is gone for right. a toss. That is only if you go off-roading and you get yeah. stuck. Yeah. Then you use that bounce yeah. True. Uh, thing. I think only in India is that called the hip-hop edition. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's it with the air in Chakan where Mercedes-Benz is based. I don't think that suddenly they had a, someone come from Amrit or Chandigarh there <laughs> and that is the Chris Reed that way. <laughs> so, they had the GLE. Uh, the important things for India, the GLA, which is their smallest SUV than the a class sedan. I love that. Both of them have been launched for India. Uh, approximately 40 to 43 lakh rupees mm-hmm. for the two of them. Uh, bookings are open now and for every month that you wait for your car, Mercedes-Benz is going to sponsor sports education for girl uh, children via the Laureus Sports Foundation. So it's a very nice move. It's a you know, yeah. they're supporting uh, Indians and, and uh, uh, so Mercedes Benz has been a uh, patron for Laureus globally for for a long time, and trying to what you call put uh, India on the global map in that sort of essence, that sort of sense. Yeah, it's, it's a it's, it's a very good CSR. It's a, it's a it's a brilliant thing well-meaning and also uplifting, you know. Yeah, uh, They also had... Uh, the so, Marco Polo. No, no. So, uh, in addition to the Laureus support, they will also be giving you a 1 lakh price uh, advantage if you book now. So, suppose if you yes. put down 40 lakhs for your uh, A-class sedan, they will give you 1 lakh off when the prices are finally firmed up because yeah. of your yeah. uh, no, staying the faith with the brand and your patience uh, with so uh, Mercedes. It, it works the other way also. If yeah, there so many people come and do that thing. So they will, what do you call, already build in the price with one lakh rupee more. So I'm just thinking yeah. from another way. So that is the GLA hmm. uh, and the A class sedan. A-class. Uh, like others said, the Marco Polo Marco. edition of the V class. V class. Now, what is that? That is a V class with. Uh, it's a house on wheels. It's a house on wheels. It's an adventure uh, vehicle. You can go, you can tour the country. You don't need to, what do you call, no need for hotels. No need for hotels. When if go and whenever you want to go rest, whenever you want to rest, it's the ideal. It's a different way of motoring life. It's uh, new to India, but it's always been there in Europe, in the US. Motor homes, adventure homes like these are par for the course. There, it's a new thing. Many Indians have been crying out for this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but let's see across over there how it, as a novelty, it's fabulous. I think even if you just think about it, if I have to go on a uh, outing to say in Madhya Pradesh from Pune, mm. and given the fact that Madhya Pradesh is not blessed with the best of Roads. roadside uh, hotels or mm. in, I think this is self-sufficient in every aspect. So what do you get with the Marco Polo? You have your living, uh, so you got that huge space inside, like a living room down. You can go up and that is your bed. Bed. Uh, bed for two. Bed for two. You got a kitchenette. The V-Class, I drove it to the run of Kutch when we did a story over there. And it was great on the highways because on the highways you need stability. Correct. You need good ride quality and you need stability. It can cruise at high triple digit speeds comfortably. Uh, it's got the refinement of a Mercedes-Benz. It's got the power that you expect of a Mercedes-Benz. Good sound system. Now, uh, this comfort, it's great. Uh, when you go out to Ladakh, yeah, like you're talking about Madhya Pradesh. What about Ladakh? Ladakh, yeah, though, exactly. you are in camps and all that. This is luxury. Luxury. It'll be awesome. So that and the fourth thing was the AMG GT four door, the fastest and most powerful four door AMG ever. Uh, it's been priced at two point three crore rupees. Okay, pricey, but you get a mad V eight engine. 900 newton meters of torque, 0 to 103 I won't suggest seconds. anyone to sit in the rear two seats. <laughs> 315 <laughs> kilometers per hour top speed. Yeah. It's wild. I can't wait to drive that. That's one of the cars that I'm... So, where the whole show was all about EVs, EVs, EVs. And Mercedes, they have announced that the EQC, yeah. their electric SUV, will be on sale uh, from April of this year. So, Mercedes also had electrics, but they're keeping the faith with of course. mad powerful noisy petrol engine so full power to you guys but with noisy in a very appealing and a emotional, emotional in a, and a soothing manner yes and not raucous you know 
So uh, we'll be going home in an electric car, but then we'll be going to the hills in a loud AMG going warm, warm. <laughs> so that's something I'm looking forward to. And before we end now, I think this podcast has gone on for very long. No, we should talk good. about the two bike manufacturers that were present. Suzuki Motorcycles. Uh, I don't know what what were we looking at over there? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing, actually speaking. No, but it's okay. Uh, Suzuki at least attempted to come there. Mm. Whether they were pushed because of Maruti or whatever be. But it was good to see them. India is the largest motorcycle market in the world. And our industry did not turn up. Mm. At its own home show. I think that's galling, to say the least. Yes, yeah. It's really galling, to say the least. I don't blame the manufacturers themselves. I also blame the organizers as well because they didn't do enough to convince them or to make life easy for them to mm, come. Mm, mm. I think they could have seen that, they could have done that. I think that's where Aprilia came in, Piaggio, Aprilia group. They had that thing, but still, they just did not, because it was a car show by and large. Yes, yeah. Uh, and I, I don't think that I... If I have to say the bike of the show, found on the Mahindra stand in the Peugeot Ludix, electric scooter, mm. well defined. It's already on sale in Europe. They yes, make, yeah. They sell so it Mahindra there. owns Peugeot two yeah, wheelers. Yeah. So in that sort of sense, that also was a highlight. But everyone missed it. Yeah. We just saw through that, you know. Yeah. So there are a lot of electric bike startups all over the show. So you can have a look at that. You should also drop in at the Evo India stand. We got a mad 4x4 four four oh. built by Sarblo Motors. It's uh, up on uh, tires, so you can see the, the articulation. Axle. The articulation of the way, uh, axles and how well it can conquer mountains in every sort of demanding condition, you know. Or rainforests. Or rainforests. <laughs> so, uh, we also have a picture point. So, you can take a picture of yourself with that 4x4, post it on uh, social media, tag Evo India, and you can win uh, merchandise from our partners, 100 kmph. We also have subscription offers there. Uh, subscribers at the Auto Expo for Evo India, Fastbikes India and Motorsport India uh, stand a chance to win an Omologato watch, a nice motorsport watch from Omologato. We also have our merchandise. So this hoodie, this is new. Other yours is also on the way. Okay. So this hoodie, this Evo India hoodie, this is new. This is also there on the uh, Auto Expo stand of Evo, Evo India. We got our whole merchandise range there. So check that out. We are also doing the CM Auto Expo show daily. So that's a show daily that is being given out at all the gates. At the auto expo it's got the map it's got uh, information on all the vehicles that you should see the happenings which happen every day so check that out and to really end this i must say i both of us we came from the auto expo i think you as an automotive enthusiast should definitely go and visit the auto expo For it sure. is smaller Absolutely. but to me that made my life as a journalist a little easier because we could really spend a little more time with the people that matter and with the cars and bikes and uh, EVs that matter and SUVs. It is an SUV show, it's an EV show, but there are really nice cars. It will be worth your time. It's also organized much better. There's less of the yeah, traffic it, it, uh, rigmarole true, over true, there. True. Uh, parking is sorted. So things but, are getting better and better. But given the fact that half the industry was not there, half the show premises was vacant, hmm. is cause for concern. You need to reinvent the show. We need to reinvent it pretty quickly. We cannot have 2022 come and go like this with another 50% drop from here. Yeah, will, That won't do. Will the auto expo happen again? I think so. It, it should and it must. But then you need everyone contributing to it. And I think more importantly, it will have to be the SIAM, CII and the ACMA, which will have to put their thinking caps on. Let's not financial concerns rule roughshod over everything else. And manufacturers also to understand that they are flying the flag for the nation. I think they need to, what you call, get that thing. But by and large, every auto show in the world is under threat. However, if you saw Tokyo was under threat and Tokyo remains the presence, uh, uh, preserve of just four or five Japanese brands. New York represents virtually everyone else in the world because the market is such a mm. huge one. Mm. Frankfurt, already the writing is on the wall. But it's going to either Munich or... Yeah, but else. again, so what I say, they have to reinvent. Yes. So, yeah. one way of reinventing Auto Expo would be to move it out of Delhi. Everything mm. doesn't... Def Expo is a key in point. For a long time, it was in Delhi. 
two years ago it was in Goa, now it's in Lucknow. Mm. And they the have defense, bought, the defense expo. Yeah, yeah, defense expo. Why are we so stuck upon Delhi for auto expo? True. It should come. Why are we Why are we so stuck upon that? As a cost of what you call the Siam taking umbrage at this statement, mm. I think they would do well to think about it. So let's hope there's a next auto expo in two years time. But that's the future. Yeah. The present. Auto Expo, go check it out. I hope you like this uh, podcast. It's been a rather long podcast. Even though they're less manufacturers, there's a lot to talk about. A lot about. to talk about. There are a lot of interesting cars, a uh, few interesting bikes. So go check it out. Let us know what you think of the podcast. Tell us on social media the stuff that you like over there. Tag us on at Evo India with your pictures. Uh, and if you like this podcast, like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next week. This is Sirish Chandran signing out for the Thrill of Driving podcast. Thank you, Adil. Thank you for being on the the podcast as always. Enjoy. And uh, whatever share advice we gave you, okay, (laughs) invest that in a good bike or car. See you next week. See you next week. Subscribe to the Evo India channel and hit the bell icon to keep pace with the Thrill of Driving.